Welcome to module number seven. Uh, in this module, we will look into some best practices pertaining to the application of the Prince to risk practice. And this would cater to learning outcome number three, understanding how to apply and tailor relevant aspects of Prince to practices in context. So what is it that we're gonna cover? We're gonna look into some aspects of application in terms of the key management products required to support the risk practice. A couple of uh, risk management documents. One would be the risk management approach, which is basically the how of risk management and the risk register, which is a part of the project log wherein we document the risks and various other aspects of the risk, such as its probability, its impact and other components. And if we look into the area of focus for key roles associated with the risk practice, and then we'll look into some effective management and associated techniques. And finally, we will analyze whether an approach to applying the risk practice is effective, fit for purpose, uh, taking into consideration the principles, the management and associated techniques and aspects of tailoring to the project environment or context. Now let's kind of briefly examine the risk management procedure. Uh, there's a five-step procedure recommended by Prince2, as you could see on the diagram on the right side. Prince 2 includes a five-step risk management procedure. Step number one is identify wherein we uh, plan the context and the objectives of the project. Uh, we identify the threats and opportunities, and then we assess. This is where we prioritize risks and assess the combined risk profile. And then we plan. Uh, we decide on risk responses and monitoring arrangements. We implement. Uh, we monitor arrangements and we execute actions for priority risks or realized risks. And finally, we communicate. This is where we um, look into how information regarding opportunities and threats are communicated within the project ecosystem. And we're needed externally to take orders from the organization's ecosystem. The communicate step operates throughout as the Outputs of any of the other steps may need to be communicated to stakeholders at any point in the process. Now let's kind of look into some techniques pertaining to the risk practice. There is a cause and effect diagram, which is also known as the Fishbone diagram or the Ishikawa diagram. Now what is this diagram used for? It is used to identify multiple factors that may lead to a risk occurring that has a particular impact on objectives. This may help project teams identify the root cause of a project, which can then be targeted to reduce its impact on probability, its impact or probability. And then we have another technique called horizon scanning. This is a technique that examines the internal and external environments and enable understanding of the current and the future risk landscapes that may result in threats and opportunities for the project. And then you have the prompt list, which are useful to identify the risk context and individual risks facing the project. Uh, types of prompt list include PESTL, which basically stands for political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental, or SWOT analysis. The S stands for strengths, W stands for weaknesses, always opportunities, and T in threat, T is threats. So these are examples of prompt lists. Um, and you have risk breakdown structure where different types of risk are broken down to identify specific risks. And then you could use risk prompt list generated from lessons learned reports by the business for common project activities, such as a risk prompt list for an office move. And then you have a technique called the pre-mortem technique, which looks back for, backwards from a future point where an objective should have been achieved painting a scenario of either success or failure, an analysis of the steps that contributed to achieving the future result can help to identify the threats or opportunities that should be considered. And then the use of data to identify, analyze, and control risks can give deeper insight into an understanding of the risks facing a project, the relationships between them and the most appropriate controls for risk mitigation. Now, the couple of documents which are relevant to the risk practice, one is a risk management approach. And the purpose of this document is to describe how risk will be managed on the project. And this includes the specific procedures, 
techniques, standards, and responsibilities to be applied. And the other document is a risk register, which is used to maintain a record of identified risks related to the project, including their status and history. It is used to capture and maintain information on all the identified threats and opportunities relating to the project. So how do we apply the practice? Um, in the context of the organization, uh, we align the risk practice to the overall risk exposure. Uh, in the context of uh, the delivery method, we might want to kind of agree on the timing of risk reviews uh, and uh, uh, what is the um, delivery technique that we are adopting. And accordingly, we might want to adopt our practices. Uh, in terms of scale, we might want to look into effective decision making and not bureaucracy. Uh, in the context of a commercial nature, a supplier might maintain their own risk register and the customer might maintain their own risk register. So we might want to look into the possibility of additional risk registers. Uh, we might also want to kind of look into risk pertaining to sustainability. Let's kind of look into a small scenario, part of a program. Effective risk management uh, requires an, a consistent approach particularly in the context of a program where different project management teams will have different attitudes towards risk. In, uh, in our example, the manager of the find, uh, find F2 program gathered the program managers or other project managers of the several projects that compose the program. The aim was to co-create and adopt the risk management approach that would align with existing corporate standards uh, the group ensured that all projects were using the same risk register, template, categories, levels, and thresholds. They also defined escalation and reporting routes in this way, thereby clarifying roles and responsibilities towards risk and aligning the risk management approach to the program level. 